Right. Uh, there's a lot of light out there. I can't see the audience. So uh, thank you, Tanmay. I don't think so anybody else has ever appreciated me so much. But all I remember is my failure stories, actually. I didn't know I have achieved so much. So thank you for reminding me. And secondly, a very big round of applause to the entire TEDx team here. So guys, please, all 30 of you. And it's beautiful to have you on a Sunday morning. Of course, a morning. You guys have been partying too hard on a Saturday evening. So, right. So thank you for coming. Although a little late, though, but that's completely fine. I can understand. Right, guys. So as I mentioned, that my stories have always been of failures. And I don't know where I achieved this. So begin, before I begin my story, all that I want to ask from the audience here, although I can't see you guys, but if you can tell me how many of you have been learners here, just raise your hand or say a yes. The louder the yes, the more the learners. Yes. Yes. Awesome. How many of you have failed? You know, I'm just wondering, all of you are brilliant. I'm nervous to present in front of like smart kids, right? And how many of you tried? Yes. Less people, right? How many of you, like how many times did you give JE? Wow, that's very smart. Wow, I think I should not give my speech any further. Because for me to do anything in my life, I sort of did it like a hundred times and then probably aced it through. So how it begins is that according to me, trying, failing, and learning are the same feelings for me. Because I could not distinguish between what is happening. Because there was never like a lot of difference for me in any of those things. So trying, learning, and failing. So there's a, you know, there's a ancient saying. I would like you guys to Google this. It's called Gate Gate, Para Gate, Para Sam Gate. Bodhiswa, and that's the philosophy of my life as well. That's to go, go, and go beyond, and way beyond. And that's what I've been doing. So hence I say, my stories are of failures. So to begin with, I actually failed class two. And I was literally thrown out of the school because uh, my mother, I remember this horrifying, you know, uh, imagery in my mind. My mother was like pulling me. And she's like, this school is bad, let's go and I failed class two, and then my parents put me to another school, and I tried. I tried, tried very hard. Fortunately, my trying became a lesson at that age, and I came third in my class. And from then on, I managed to pass my class 12th, like slowly and gradually, with a 92% and a bundle of trophies and certificates. I know this doesn't matter to you because you're all like 95 and above. So yeah, and uh, that's, that's where I reached. And then I happened to go to England. Uh, I told my dad, you know, the first, first poem that I learned was London Bridge is Falling Down. And uh, I really had some fascination, you know, the colonial slavery that we have within us to go to London and do something, I didn't know what and happened to go to London. My dad said, I don't have enough money to send you to London. We are poor. And I said, no, but I still want to go. And I happened to apply for an internship. And my, in sorry, happened to apply for a scholarship. And they asked me that you should do an internship. And in our country, in, you know, back in 2010, there wasn't such concepts of internships and things like that. Uh, so I just happened to go to an NGO called RLEK. It's called Rural Litigation and Entitlement Kendra. And happened to be there. The thing that I enjoyed the most there was Andolan. You know, like just sitting on roads and shouting and yelling. I think that was, so I was really intrigued with the idea. And on those bases, because I'd done some work there with the tribal communities for about six months, and a lot of other things in my curriculum and my academia, I happened to go on a scholarship to England. And over there also, I was always the Andolan types. Yesterday I was telling some students here, why don't you clean up your university? It's just sad. And they said, oh, this is not our forte. Oh, I was like, really? Like, so I was just telling them, andolan karo. You know, get your university cleaned or clean it yourself. Uh, so that's the type you can relate me to. Uh, went to Lancaster University, got graduated. Again, tried, tried, tried a lot. Eventually got a student award of Lancaster 
about 16 people get it every year out of 16,000 people. Uh, so got that award, which was like a great achievement. And one of the only Indians till date to get that award. Um, again, it's this angst sort of a nature that I have that why I cannot. And of course, go and go and go be way beyond was the philosophy always. Um, now my education got over. And my father is like, Bita, wapas a jao, bahut pad liye. I was like, fair enough, let's come back. And I always wanted to do a job. I thought I'll be a British citizen and all that stuff. Uh, I happened to come back to India. Uh, my grandmother said, Beta, fir to shadi ho jayegi tumhari, dekho a jao. I said, fair enough, I'll come back, right? I came back and I belong to a very typical Banya Marwadi family. So I hope a lot of you can relate here. So uh, my dad said, bas beta, this is your office. Now you sit here and do the work. I, I, I thought, yeah, that's what I've learned all my life to help my parents in business and do something for, for my parents, you know, and for my business, my family business, my legacy. And after a few weeks, I was in legit depression, like complete depression. I was like, what am I doing here? Like, is it really something that I'm meant to? Or is it, this is because I used to have fights with my family, with my mom, with my dad, like every hour, not even every day. And after a few weeks, I went into like great depression because the problem here was very complicated. Actually, you know, ever since you were a child, you were always taught, you know, do something for your parents, do something for your family business. So that's what I was taught and that's what I learned. And here I was not liking what I'm doing. And then I was like, boss, this is like a different level of feeling, man. What I've learned that I'm not able to do, I am not liking that. Like, how do I do anything, right? And it came to this complete breakdown in life. I got dengue and I was blaming my parents for it that if I was in England, a mosquito wouldn't have bitten me. It is in only in India that mosquitoes bite. And uh, I got dengue and I got very, very severe dengue in 2014. Um, it was like I was on a deathbed and I was on complete, I was in hospital for about 45 days. I came out and for three months I was completely at home, completely on bed rest. So IITNs would really relate to it. Ki bhai, jab aisa bimar hote hai, toh sochne ka time milta hai. So like, you know, a lot of, lot of time to think. And what I realized was I wrote down a journal at that time. And I sort of wrote things down wherein uh, you know, what is that memory that I remember? What is that I like doing? So it came to a conclusion that the purpose of my life is to sort of empower people and communities. And that's what I love doing. And so I went, uh, went out and told this to my dad. My dad's like, it has really hit you. Your illness has really hit you. <laughs> you need to take a break. Go on a holiday. And my daddy's like, ye tum England se lai ho ye bimari. This depression wali. This is not in Hindustan. So, you know, depression is not something that happens in India. You got it from England. I said, no, man, this is like legit. It's a problem. Like, acknowledge it. But nothing really happened. I, I'm just making my parents sound really evil. They're not that evil, though. But yeah, that was the story, you know. And um, uh, so that's, that's really what happened. And I could not realize what is happening to me. And the moment I had this revelation that my purpose of my life is to empower people, I told my parents about it. And they legit told me, go have a holiday. And uh, I said, no, I'm fine. And that is the time, uh, you know, one of my dad's friends said that she should prepare for civil services. And here I am back from England. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, back from England, I didn't even know who a uh, collector DM. Hota like, I'm like, what nonsense is this? My dad's like, yeah, 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 even I feel she should prepare for like civil services. And I found this as a great escape. Uh, my dad said, yeah, yeah, your coaching starts like we found your coaching center. The coaching starts at about three in the afternoon. And you have your lunch, you leave office by one, have your lunch and go for the coaching. I was like, yeah, I just have to jello them for like three, four hours in the morning. Be in the office, I'll go, whatever it may happen. So I went, prepared for civil services, uh, went to the coaching. It was my third day in my coaching. And I was like, like sitting right in front where the speakers are sitting. And I started howling. And my teacher's like, what's wrong with you? We know you're going through depression and all. You know, that's how casual it was. And I come from a very small town. I was like, yeah, 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 but we need to talk about this. So he came out after finishing his class. He's like, what's wrong with you? I said, you know, sir, what? I think this is actually what I really want to do. 
uh, is to empower people. I don't know how to do it. But today's sitting, it was my class wherein I, he was trying to teach me about the constitution of our country and specifically about the fundamental rights of the citizens of our nation. And he just mentioned that, you know, what are, the, what are our rights and other things. And I was sitting there. I said, if a person like me who belongs to a decent family where parents, even grandparents are educated, where we've traveled the world, I have taken education from probably the best schools and colleges in the world, and I don't know my fundamental right, what happens to those who are not, who do not have this privilege of knowledge or even financial or exposure? And that is the moment I realize that boss, my, my thought of empowering people is not just dumb or it is not out of my illness, it is genuine and that's where I want to go. And then, because I was new to the uh, country, because I stayed in a boarding school, uh, went to England, so I didn't have friends in my local community. I went and, you know, sort of met people, like, you know, how you go on, like, coffee dates and chill, and you're like, hi, what's your name? So I would say, Nupur. And then they would say, sorry, please come again. What's your full name? One day, I really blasted off a person. I said, what is pinching your ass, you know? If I'm Khan, Dhat, Bhart, Kumar, like, how does it really matter? But trust me, guys, it really matters. It matters from what caste, creed, gender, X, Y, Z you come from. So I did this social experiment for about four months where I didn't tell people where I studied or what my surname was. Like, just gave different random information to people. And that is the moment I realized that it is discrimination that is leading our country to a disaster, that is leading our country to, like, poverty, inequality, and anything and everything negative that you can think about. So I. I wanted to take a step. I took a step. I created a community called Dehradun Drum Circle because that's all I knew. As Tanmay mentioned, music and dance are something that I would want to do all my life. I created this community called Dehradun Drum Circle. So I had these friends who were really hippie looking people. And my parents also said, Yar, why are you chilling with these people? They're not right. I was like, no, they're okay, man. They're not that, uh, as bad as you are. So. And, uh, you know, these are like people with piercings and tattoo and dreadlocks and, you know, they would just play. And they and me had something very similar. The society wasn't ready to ac accept them and so was the case with me. And we tried, we just sat with some jambes and all. And I suggest you guys should do some drum circle here at IIT as well. It's good fun. And we started playing. And we started playing, a lot of people joined. Today it's a community of about 20,000 people across the country. And people come express themselves and play music. And in this journey of expressing themselves, they become more accepting. So that's where I started. And you know around, so I got an opportunity to get a ticket from Ahmadmi Party and all that stuff. Uh, but again, you know, I was very young, didn't know all this, what it means. So here are my photos of the drum circle. Like you can see the hooligan in me started coming out. You can see very hippie looking people out there. Uh, so this wasn't acceptable to the society where my parents belong to. And they said that, Hamare ghar ki pe dhol nahi bajati hai. You know, women from our house don't play drums on the roads. I said, no, but I'm not playing drum. I'm like, uh, you know, having like a community event and it is to expression and it is to acceptance and it is to make a society more discrimination free. And they said, no, 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 you have to shut this down. So that conversation with my family, I remember, was very, very disastrous. I was on the verge of like, because I'd built this community and I really believed in it. And I was also preparing for civil services and I thought I will clear it. Eventually I did. I messed up my interview because I thought that this is really not the right place for me. And at that moment, this is a very vulnerable conversation I'm just feeling now that I'm having, which is uh, I was on the verges of committing suicide. I was like, what nonsense, man. Here the world loves me and they're trying to do everything for me. And that was the moment of, again, you know, relearning, unlearning things. And that is the moment where I realized, boss, if not this, something else. You know, everybody has a chance to keep doing different, different things. And that's where I realized that, yes, my parents would be right in some way or the other. Probably I have more potential to do something else as well and not just play drums on the road. And I took it very seriously. And that is the time I just, like, hugged my parents and I accepted that I don't have to fight anymore. You know, we can do things together. Like, we can have Madhya Mark. I happened to, in my journey of drum circle, I happened to visit a village. Uh, this is called Tolibhur. Today we've adopted that village and we do a lot of work there. 
and idealize that India lives in the villages. 70% of our population and our natural resource is in the villages and we're not doing shit about it. You know, we're not doing anything about it. People are still living in those poverties. There is still marginalization. Like as, you, as other speakers mentioned that how much, uh, you know, development or progress is still required in these villages. So that's where we started Evolve Foundation to focus on three areas called um, livelihood, skill development, and healthcare. And today, the model of smart uh, and the model of sustainability, the government of India took it, uh, like t took the documentation from us, asked us to go to Thailand and teach it over there. So it's a very proud moment to share this fact that a model started in a very, very small place with a primitive tri uh, tribal people called the Jansari people went to Thailand from there. So that's one of the great achievements we've been able to showcase as an Indian community and not me as a loan. Now, so that's what we did. We did plantable stationery. So we've got the patent to make pencils. I'm sure a lot of brands you might be seeing to make plantable paper and plantable pencils and so on and so forth. So what we did was we modulated like a model behind it. That one pencil, the seed comes from the farmer. The, you know, the assembly of it is done by the women of the family. And the, the funds that we generate surplus that we give for employment and other things goes in the education of the village, like skill development and so on and so forth. So that's what we did at Evolve Foundation. Also what we did at Evolve Foundation was rural ecotourism. So every, there are about 20 household in my village and every household has one room free. So we converted that into a homestay and we would have a lot of residencies. And I invite you all if you want to come. And we also are a walkthrough museum today by, uh, accredited by Google Art and Culture, where we painted the walls of all the houses with the folk stories of this culture, because this language, which is called John Sari, cannot be written. It only can be spoken. And because of extreme migration from the Himalayan villages, it's just evaporating. Coming to that, uh, you know, so me and my boyfriend then, uh, who's also now my partner and my husband, and because I was like, yeah, all the time I spend with him only, there's no time to spend with any other boy, hence get married to him. Uh, so, you know, we started this foundation together called Evolve Foundation, and then we realized, you know what, we're still not earning money. And how long can we survive without money? You know, we're always like, and we don't believe in subsidies. We sell our product and we make that sustainable because I believe that sus subsidy is something that uh, breaks you down. It's not something that's empowering you. So we said, we also need some money. Where do we get that from? And what we realized living in the village for a very, very long time, that majority of the people are into farming practices. And we thought in our lifetimes, if we keep adopting villages, it might, we might only be able to adopt like four to five villages and not more. So we got into a sector which was farming. And we today are connected with about 35,000 farmers across the country. And for which we've been like, we recently went to Dubai as a India, India's delegation to you know, have the government do different things and present the nation and the farmers of the nation we recently again got awarded by CII and FIKI to do this. So we are the biggest organization, or I would say a startup, a social startup, a private startup, to be able to mobilize such huge numbers of farmers and create a D2C, farm to folk, health, health, uh, health and wellness food brand, which is completely tech enabled. So we are India's fastest growing farm to folk model. And hence, we've been on to like different places and trying to do something different. So again, this didn't come, all these things, you know, didn't come very easy. It was very, very big failure, like immense failure every day. Like we still fail every day. Like, for example, I failed to wake up on time today, but I was still before you guys. So, you know, we still fail every day and we still learn, we still unlearn, we still relearn. So guys, my suggestion uh, and my opinion is that even if you fail, you know, don't try, don't, don't not try, always try, always learn. It's okay, and trust me, all that you can change is yourself. And the moment you change yourself, the moment you take the initiative, the world around, around you will support you. My parents today, my grandmother, my parents, my brother, everybody's in love with me. Like, you know, and I'm in love with them, probably because there was something I was doing incorrect or there was something that I was not able to portray in the right way. 
right? But that I learned over a period of time. I failed, I learned, I was on the verge of losing my life, and I relearned, right? So, and this is an ongoing process, as a lot of other speakers said that ever changing, this is an ongoing process. So, my last uh, few words that I would like to say is, um, yeah, so my last few words that I would like to say is that, uh, do something that matters, because God's given you one life, make a change, make a difference, in whatever way, right? And always remember to be kind to one another, and keep expressing yourself, and keep evolving. That's very important. Can you all repeat behind me? Keep? Yeah, I'm just trying to like figure out if you're awake, because there's this light on me. So once again, keep? Sorry, I couldn't hear you guys. Keep? Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.